That's right. You're listening to CSHR Radio, and this is the Now Podcast. It's 1041 in the morning. Yeah, it's a beautiful morning down here in Baton Rouge. I don't even know why I'm here this morning. But anyway, we're here to talk about local things today. It's 1041 in the morning. Uh, This is the Now Podcast. Glad you decided to join us. Uh, Yeah, whatever. Anyway, we have a lot of things to talk about today. A lot of stuff developing here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ah, Some fun shit. Always the mayor in the brave cave. Two top things in the news today. And the interim police chief. I'm saying interim now, but... uh, I, I, I just don't see him being police chief, chief much longer. You know, I, I mean, it's just what I'm thinking anyway. I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, you know, you know how that goes. Well, I mean, I'm normally wrong anyway, but whatever. It's, anyway, <laughs> Scotty Hunter uh, pretty much uh, just blew the brave cave off of the map, uh, brought it to the public, uh, that with, along with, uh, you know, a, a, a bunch of, a bunch of, uh, inmates being brought there to be literally, uh, tortured in, in, as far as their questioning is concerned. Uh, so far, four police officers have been arrested and, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better now at this point. Um, you know, Baton Rouge Proud reporting is uh, is reporting now that another Baton Rouge police officer linked to the Brave Cave. This is October 2nd, so it was a few days ago. Was booked in an East Baton Rouge Parish Jail Prison, or East Baton Rouge Parish Prison Monday, according to jail records. Douglas Schutz is the latest one that was arrested. He was identified as the fourth BRPD officer facing charges in a Friday news conference from the police department. Uh, officials from BRPD said he faced a malfeasance in office charge. He was booked into the jail on the charge and a $15,000 bond was set. Um, of course, there's been three other officers involved in this investigation as of now. Um, the other officer is arrested and charged in connection to a misconduct at a quote unquote torture warehouse, including allegations of illegal strip searches and beatings were identified by as deputy chief, Tony Troy Lawrence, senior Sergeant Jesse Bar- Barcelona and Carpal Todd Thomas. Okay. So that's the four people right now that's in jail from this entire debacle debacle or whatever you want to call it. So basically what Baton Rouge PD is doing, <clears throat> and I mean, it's, it's it's not a question as to whether they're corrupt or not. I mean, we've seen enough now in this area to know that they're most definitely corrupt. <laughs> I mean, it, it's from beating people on the side of the road for walking on the wrong spot of the sidewalk and, and you know, other fun things like that. I mean, this is not normal. This is not new for Baton Rouge in any way, shape, or form. So right now we have uh, Deputy Chief Troy Lawrence Sr., Sergeant Jesse Barcelona, Corporal Todd Thomas, and now Officer Douglas Schutz. Some fine, upstanding gentlemen here in the Baton Rouge area. We want to uh, tell you how much we appreciate your service. That's right. Uh, you deserve to be in jail. Uh, because, you know, there's this little thing in the United States called due process. And, you know, I know this is Louisiana and all, and some of you can't get that, but there is laws that we have to follow. I mean, that's just normal. You know, so I'm not really sure why you think this is okay. Um... But then again, I'm not surprised either. Because like I said, you know, this is not unusual for the city of Baton Rouge. By no way, shape, or form. And, and Broom, I just want to thank you personally now as the mayor of Baton Rouge, the mayor president of uh, East Baton Rouge Parish. Thank you for all of your hard work and totally destroying this parish. You did a great job. You've done a really good job so far. 
there is no way that these four people were doing this without the police chief knowing what they're doing. And I'm not going to sit here and say that only the Baton Rouge PD invo- was involved. Sid Gotro, I think you really need to investigate your own deputies and find out if the sheriff's department was involved. I mean, after all, you two kind of do have the same boss being uh, Sharon West and Broom. But, you know, I'm pretty sure whatever happens will get swept under the table like everything else y'all do. You know? But I'm, I'm, I'm so glad this has came to light because even the FBI is getting involved at this point. Uh, the FBI Friday said it was it has opened, opened a civil rights investigation and allegations in recent lawsuits that police in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, assaulted drug suspects. They detained in an obscure warehouse known as, quote, unquote, the Brave Cave. Really? What's supposed to be brave about it? How are you going to sit there and name it the Brave Cave when obviously you can't do your job correctly and you're not brave enough to do it that way? So you need some warehouse that's off the map. And an officer at the center of the allegations, the son of the current deputy chief, resigned and was arrested on a simple battery charge. Why not full-on assault? I mean, you could get arrested on simple battery for literally tripping someone if the cop's a big enough D-bag, for lack of a better way of saying it. So basically, this guy was bringing people to this uh, abandoned warehouse and beating people, trying to get information out of them, and all y'all gave him was a simple battery charge. Y'all wonder why uh, a lot of people have a lot of bad, negative things to say about the cops. This is probably a reason why. I mean, you have a warehouse in the middle of a city, and you have four guys that's bringing... uh, potential drug suspects there and beating them. Yeah, that that's that's not simple battery, sir. You're a police officer. Matter of fact, since you carry a gun, that should have been assault with a deadly weapon, regardless of whether you pulled that gun or not. You're a higher standard than we are, sir. We're civilians. You're supposed to up a lo- uphold the, the law. Keep that in mind. Uphold the law. You're not supposed to rewrite the law as you see fit. When you take that oath, and I, I and I get it, I, you know, I, I do get the you know the the things they tell you when you're in police academy. I, I, I get it. I mean, don't get me wrong. The things they tell you in the police academy is you know to not you're you're going to be depressed. You're going to want to wind up wanting to commit suicide, etc. You're going to see things you don't want to see. I get that. I get it. But still, when you put that badge on your shirt, you are taking an oath to uphold the law and protect the citizens of the department that you're in. A simple battery charge is like a slap in the face for the rest of the citizens of this parish. I am so glad Hiller Moore, our current DA, um, decided to just bring that simple battery charge up. Yeah, really. I mean, the guy was bringing people to an abandoned warehouse and y'all brought him up on a simple battery charge. Beating people in an abandoned warehouse and y'all gave him a simple battery charge. It's wonderful. Anyway, phone lines are open if you have something to say. Or if you have thoughts on what I'm talking about this morning. Uh, right now, currently, we're talking about the... Uh, the Brave Cave here in Baton Rouge, and uh, the 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 just the overall entitlement of this police department we have here in Baton Rouge. I don't know if anybody really realizes how big of a problem that is. I mean, this state has been wrapped up in good old boy things for so long that this almost seems normal. It's not. When you put on that badge, I'll say it again. And I'm kind of stuck on this. When you put on that badge, you're supposed to uphold the law and protect the citizens that you gave an oath to protect. I mean, I get it. These people are drug dealers and everything else. And okay, 
yeah, but th- they are no more special than myself or anyone else. They do require the same due diligence that anyone else that may be brought up on the same type of charges would be brought up on. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science guys. And you know, the whole simple battery charge thing is just a slap in the face. It really is. And anyone that's listening right now knows for a fact that if you were, uh, you were put in that same position, If you were put in that same position, you would more than likely get charged with assault with a deadly weapon just for the simple fact that you carry a gun. These people were bringing suspects with no due process whatsoever to an abandoned warehouse in the middle of Baton Rouge and beating them, trying to get information out of them. The first one that was arrested got a simple battery charge. That is outrageous. I don't care who you are. I don't care what walk of life you came from. That is unacceptable. The whole thing, the whole fact of the matter of having a police force in place is to have our protection as the main priority. It's not to write the laws as you see fit. I don't know why it's so hard to understand. I really don't. And it's not a racial line. Please do not think this is a racially divided type thing because it's not. It's not. It doesn't matter what color you are. These police are absolutely out of control. And now our esteemed police chief is complaining because... He wants to bring out bring in outside representation instead of using the parish's attorneys. What are you scared of? Um, are you scared of uh, you know them not representing you correctly because uh, you blatantly did something wrong? Is that the problem? Is that why you need outside counsel? And someone asked me yesterday, do you think it affects the caseload of these uh, parish attorneys? Yes, absolutely it does. You know why? Because it shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't even be on their desk. So you know what, police chief? I'm going to go out on a limb and say it right now. You, sir, are just as guilty as your police officers that were arrested for it. Sorry. Sorry. I, and I know that sucks for you, but, uh, yeah, you're just as at fault. You're just as bad. Murphy, Paul, you're just as bad. And, uh, you know, which is even more funny. Cause I don't, I, if you know, somebody can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I really want to say that Murphy, Paul was not even elected. I think he was just kind of like put there. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, if he was elected, please correct me. Number is 225-577-6488 or 1-844-900-2747. This is CSHR Radio. The time is 10.55 a.m. We're in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we're talking about the police department here in Baton Rouge. That's right. Give me some thoughts. Call in. Let me see how this goes. And, you know, it's... (laughs) Baton Rouge leaders say you shouldn't resign. Why not? Why? Why shouldn't he? I mean, literally the entire public population of Baton Rouge is saying this guy, as well as Sharon Weston Broom, needs to go. And y'all are saying not? No? Why? A number of Baton Rouge's political faith and community leaders rallied outside Baton Rouge's police's headquarters Monday morning in support of Chief Murphy Paul and made calls for his resignation over his behavior at a Metro Council meeting last week. About 30 people stood at a microphone Monday as speakers praised Paul's work as a chief and admonished those who called for him to leave before his already announced November resignation date. And you know what? I don't care. I I really don't care if this man is resigning next week. 
he could be resigning next Tuesday. I don't care. He could resign tomorrow morning. I don't care. That's not fast enough. This man is an actual joke to our city. And they want to admonish people for calling him out for it. That's not how it works. You have people coming in to the Brave Cave getting beat over drug charges with the police department. You arrest police officers. You only charge them with simple battery for it. I'm sorry, but if I was arrested doing the same thing and I was wearing a gun, that would be assault with a deadly weapon, regardless of whether I pulled a gun or not. But that's how you people are. What's good for the goose is definitely not good for the gander around here, is it? Nope. And now you're having problems with your legal representation. Okay, well then fine. If the legal representation that's given to you is not good enough, then go buy your own. It's not hard to figure out. The calls for resignation came from the Metro Council members Denise Amoroso, Aaron Moak, and Jennifer Rocca, all white and Republicans, which I, that makes no difference. The political spectrum and what color they are has absolutely no difference whatsoever. Advocate, you are a joke for reporting it that way. That That's not even needed. Why would you even put that in the middle of a, a news report? <sighs> anyway, they all issued statements and letters last week in response to a fiery exchange between council members, members and Chief Paul during a hearing during last week's Metro, Metro Council meeting. Uh, Rocca and Moak scolded Paul over the allegations of abuse at BRT warehouse facility called, uh, quote unquote, the brave cave by some officers placing blame on him for not knowing about the allegations and intervening, viewing, intervening sooner. Jeez, my tongue is tied in a knot this morning. I apologize for that. Anyway, uh, he let out a fiery display. Defense accusing council members of conducting backroom meetings about him and staying silent as critics who he did not identify as racist comments. No, you're a bad police chief, and that's not a back. That's not me in a back room saying that. That's me out right in front saying you're a, you're a horrible police chief. There's no way all of these people were doing this at the Brave Cave and you didn't know about it. And it said, don't sit here and play like you don't know that this group, about this group that tries to force the mayor to sit there and fire me for lies and say I only discipline white folks. Well, no, that, that that's a major problem. You don't discipline anybody. And the ones that you do pick up, you bring them to a warehouse and you try to beat them. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Metro Council, if any one of you are listening, just take his legal representation, period. Let him pay for it on his own. If that's the case, I mean, if that's the way he feels, then yeah, why are we why are we footing a bill for this? Why are we footing a bill? And then to top it off, as a rally rally for Chief Paul took place Monday morning in front of their headquarters. Uh, police cruisers patrol the houses of council members concerned over a threatening email that had been sent to them Sunday morning. Yeah. And, you know, the funny part about it is, is that the emails were asking them to pull Chief Paul. Uh, well, you know what? I can't say I don't agree with him. I really can't say I, I don't agree with them at this point. You know, I mean, he's a bad cop, just like the ones that were arrested for the Brave Cave incident. Those were bad cops, too. You know, aside from your personal beliefs and everything, Chief Paul, I will say this. You need to learn how to exercise some type of restraint. You, just like the officers that work for you, put on that badge to uphold our city's laws. Not write them as you see them. Not write them as you see fit. 
your only job is to protect the public interest as a police officer to enforce the laws I mean it, come on guy and nobody thinks you're only discipline white folks, quote unquote, white folks, like you like to say it. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's definitely accusing you of doing that, sir. I'm pretty sure if you look at the uh, entire roster of inmates you have over there at the Baton Rouge Parish Prison now, I bet you a good strong 85% of those people are people of color. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say at least 70% of those people are there for fr- frivolous charges to start off with. Anytime you te- keep someone in jail over a traffic violation for two months, yeah, that's pretty stupid. Don't speed in Baton Rouge. You'll go to prison for at least two months. At least. Before they even get to you in the court. And then we got judges like Trudy White that just turns anyone loose. Doesn't matter what they do. You want to knock over a liquor store? Make sure Trudy White Trudy White's your judge. Doesn't matter what color you are. You can be white, black, Hispanic, Indian, whatever. Doesn't matter at all. Just make sure she's your judge. You'll get off free. Mayor Weston Broom, this city parish period has one of the highest crime rates in the country now and you're too busy having a police chief that thinks it's okay for his officers to just bring people to abandoned warehouses and beat them real cute then you're gonna go out here and this is for you paul you're going to go out here and just lambast the the city council for telling you to do your job. I think you need to go for anger management classes, honestly. Maybe find a different career. Like as a security guard at a mall. I think that's about more your speed. Yeah, whatever. Great job, guy. That's all I can tell you. Great job. (sighs) Anyway, moving along. Man, I had everything here pulled up for me already, and now I can't find anything. That's brilliant. What happened to everything? Oh, well. So some news around the state. Um, Judge Charles' challenge to Louisiana's age verification law aimed at porn websites, which is, this is kind of funny. I mean, I I didn't know this was that big of a problem here, but apparently it is. An adult entertainment group's lawsuit against Louisiana law requiring sexually explicit websites to verify the ages of their viewers was dismissed Wednesday by a federal judge. But opponents say... Of the law, say they will likely appeal. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't normally watch internet porn. Well, I, I don't. <laughs> I had no idea you had to verify your age. It's always been free. <laughs> All right, well, anyway. U.S. District Judge Susie Morgan in, the New, in New Orleans ruled that The state officials named in the lawsuit, State Public Safety Secretary James LeBlanc, uh, Commissioner of Administration Jay Darden, and Attorney General Jeff Landry cannot be sued because they don't have a duty to enforce the act, which allows violators to be sued and face civil penalties. Uh, Yeah, they do. They were involved in making the law, so yeah, they have a duty to enforce the act. I mean, they sponsored the bill. That's not how that works. 
Morgan also said granting an injunction against the three state officials wouldn't prevent people from suing content providers who fail to verify their viewers' age. Really, who's suing these these pornography peddlers? I mean, the law passed in 2022 subjects certain websites to damage lawsuits and state civil penalties as high as $5,000 a day if they fail to verify that users are at least 18 years old by requiring the use of digitized state ID driver's licenses or other methods. So if you're 18 years old and you're bored at home, you won't be able to play with your Cheeto if you don't have a proper ID. Just keep that in mind. Um, that, that And that's the thing to keep in mind. If you want to play with your Cheeto, at home at 18 years old in the state of Louisiana, you must have an ID in order to look at porn online. If not, if you find one of those websites, I implore, I would seriously suggest just going there and suing them and getting the five thousand dollars a day <laughs> that the state is penalizing them with. <sighs> As with Utah, the state, the Louisiana ruling is fairly limited and only applies to whether we can bring pre-enforcement challenge against the law or whether we have to wait until a suit is brought. While we disagree and will appeal, it's not at all a ruling on the merits of the law, which are still clearly unconstitutional. So there you have it, folks. Pornography now is uh, protected by the First Amendment, apparently. I missed that memo. But I, I got to give it to these guys. That's actually kind of funny. You're going to sue over First Amendment rights because teenagers can't watch porn. All right. I, it's a it's an age verification guy. It, it's really. I, I mean, come on. Opponents say the law could chill free speech because the terms are so vague that providers wouldn't be able to decipher "quote unquote" material harmful to minors. It's pornography. Are these people being serious right now? Is this a joke? Come on. It's pornography. I mean, don't get me wrong. All of us were teenagers once, and we all had curiosities. But it's harmful to minors. Uh, Obviously, it's pornography. Come on. In addition to the Free Speech Coalition, the Louisiana plaintiffs include three providers of sexually explicit content and a woman who lives in Louisiana but doesn't have a state ID and does not want to lose access to adult sites. Okay, let me reread that last statement. (laughs) I'm going to reread this last statement because this this one just caught me off guard. In addition to Free Speech Coalition, comma, The Louisiana plaintiffs include three providers of sexually explicit content and a woman who lives in Louisiana but doesn't have a state ID and does not want to lose access to those adult sites. What are you doing, lady? And why can't you afford the $25 to go get an ID? Or is this your cash cow? Oh, God. (laughs) She is very angry she's going to lose access to her pornography. (sighs) Nice. Yeah, we hadn't had a murder in 30 days, but uh, according to Hiller Moore yesterday during a live interview on Talk 107.3 here in Baton Rouge. But guess what? Last night, a 20-year-old was shot and killed. Off of Howell Range Avenue. That's what you get for boasting, I guess. And, of course, we're going to move over to uh, Florida. Because there was a man arrested in an illegal rectal dysfunction pills plot. Yeah! 
<laughs> the villages, Florida. A 77-year-old Florida man was arrested by federal officials, accused of having thousands of dollars worth of illegal pills used to treat erectile dysfunction. Yeah, no boners in Florida today. Not in the villages, at least. The villages, with homes sprawling through multiple Florida counties, is considered one of the largest retirement communities in the nation. It is the kind of place where a particular type of prescription pill could be in huge demand. Because you know old people, the elderly have to get their fix. God, that's horrible. According to federal officials, Reginald Kinser allegedly was willing to satisfy the demand with an illegal pill plot. And they are trying to do the right thing, and I'm trying to do the right t- thing too, Kenser said during a quick interview with WESH from his home in the villages. According to a news release from the Department, the U.S. Department of Justice, Kenser had more than $800 worth of the off-brand pills stashed in his house. Pills he allegedly had got, quote-unquote, without a prescription from a licensed doctor, and planned to, quote-unquote, redistribute the drugs in and outside of the state. Cancer has become somewhat of a folklore legend in the villages. <laughs> "Quote or quote, consider him to be the neighborhood pharmacist," said one from, uh, said one resident who did, obviously did not provide his name. Cancer is facing a charge that could lead to a year-long stint in federal prison, which left his fans even more confused than why he was arrested in the first place. These old people, they, they want to have sex. <laughs> and obviously from this story, they will do, they will do that at any means possible. <sighs> God. Ten people was also sentenced after investigation in a drug trafficking ring uh, based in Ascension Parish. And... No, this is even better. Why, why, ladies, why, if you're a teacher, can you not keep your hands off of students? A former Loringer middle school teacher accused of having sex and becoming pregnant by a student is out on bond. According to the Tangia Pahoa Parish Sheriff's Office, 33-year-old Morgan Freshes' total bond was set at $155,000. She's also required to wear an ankle monitor. Uh, last week, uh, Freish desi- resigned from Loringer Middle School after deputies began investigating reports that a 17-year-old fathered a child with her. I thought 17 in this state was legal. It, okay, that, that raises some questions because I'm pretty sure that the age of consent in Louisiana is 17 years old. I could be wrong on that. So if somebody could correct me, that would be great. But I'm almost positive that it's uh, a normal thing. I'm not 100% sure. I could be lying about that. I mean, morally, yes, it's wrong. Legally, I don't think that's wrong. Morally, I, I mean, morally, it's disgusting. Obviously. I mean, morally, it's just downright disgusting, period. But then again, I'm old. So anybody below the age of 20 is disgusting to me. Actually, anybody below the age of 30 is disgusting to me, but that's a different story. Anywho, I think I'm going to get out of here for today. If you have any thoughts on the show... Please call one 900 2747 You're listening to the Now Podcast. This is CSHR Radio. I'm out of here for today. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon.